There's a long story and a short story, basically. The longer story is that I'd written a, a novel, about seven chapters of a novel, and it was called The Brothers Grimm, uh, when I was about 18, 19 years old. And so uh, I wrote that, I wrote seven chapters, but I actually hadn't um, plotted out the novel at all. I hadn't structured it in any way, shape or form. And so I knew what was going to happen in the end of the novel. But I had no idea what was going to happen in the middle. So I started it and it was going really great. And I got to chapter seven and then like, I didn't know what was going to happen next. And uh, it was meant to be a generational novel. Uh, I talked about it in my earlier panel. It was like a Windrush novel. Um, coinciding with that was that I read Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvon, which is a Windrush novel. And uh, he was, it was written by Sam Selvon in the 1950s at the time when everything was happening and it had a lot of the stories and things that I was talking about in my novel. So I looked at that and I said, uh, it's been done already. That's it. I might as well scrap this novel. And plus, I didn't know what was going to happen next. So um, I stopped for a while. I thought, what can I do? What, what, what story can I tell that I know as intimately as he knows that one? And I started thinking that I could talk about what it meant to be Black British right now, uh, which was like the 90s, like the mid 90s at the time. Uh, so many things that no one ever talked about at that time. I mean, it's all commonplace now. We've got grime, we've got, you know, uh, the language, the slang, the music. Um, just so many things are just like part of mainstream society now in terms of black British culture, which weren't there, uh, 20 odd years ago. So, uh, I said, okay, well, you know, let me do that. I started to work on that. At the same time, I'd written about three chapters of it. At that point in time, I'd written it on my mum's friend's word processor. It was a Canon Star Writer. And um, it had it had like a print in a printer built in and a screen and everything. But she was a teacher. She was studying to be a teacher and she needed it back. So I wrote three chapters. She took it back. That's all I had. And those are the three chapters that are in the scholar today. I've written those. So uh, I was like, what am I going to do? And my friend met a guy called Barney, Barney Platts Mills, his name was. And uh, he was a filmmaker that uh, did uh, like video drama projects with young people, mainly from Labour Grove. I lived kind of like in between Shepherd's Bush and Labour Grove. But uh, I used to go to Labour Grove regularly. My best friend was from Labour Grove. So he was based on Portobello Road and he ran uh, a, a video drama project called Massive Video. And um, was, I think he was involved in the inception of another one called YCTV. And um, he at St. Helens Church in St. Quentin's Avenue in Labour Grove. He would meet there like every Friday and try and encourage people to join Massive Video. So my friend went down there and just said to him, look, you know, my friend wants to write a book. And he said, he's not interested in film. He said, no, 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 just books. All right, like, let him meet me and I'll see the book and see what we can do. So I went down there to meet him, gave him my three chapters. I said to him, listen, if you, this is copywritten, right? So if you like to try and take this and sell this anywhere else, basically I'll sue you. And he just looked at me like, okay, fair enough, whatever you say. And then about, I don't know what the length of time was, a week, two weeks later, he turns up, turns up at my door with uh, a computer monitor, uh, a hard drive that had like Ilya stamped on the side of it, in the London Education Authority, stamped on the side of it, and uh, a keyboard, and just said, you know, you've got no excuses now, write your novel. And Barney became my mentor. Uh, I w worked on the book with him for about eight months until I finished the book. Um, I also worked in Argos and got myself a little computer table and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, after that, when the book was done, first draft, he then helped me to shape the book. Um, that took about, I don't know, maybe about a year or so, longer. And then I started sending it out to publishers, obviously getting rejected by everyone. Um, I sent it to two agents, uh, didn't hear back from any of those. And then Barney knew someone who worked at uh, William Morris. And I think um, the lady you just interviewed was like at William Morris at the time as well. So I know her from William Morris, yeah. So basically, um, he introduced me to the people at William Morris. They were really excited about what I'd written and I managed to get signed. Oh, and then afterwards they had an a, a auction and there was three publishers involved in that auction. And yeah, I, I signed with uh, Abacus. Yeah, just so all in all, it took about a year, year and a half, maybe 18 months or so. Yeah, I mean, I always just say to people just to write, you know, that, that don't worry about 
being published. Don't worry about what people have got to say. Don't worry about your own self doubt, which is never going to go away. Uh, just to write and to get into the practice of doing it. Like, you know, if you can't do it every day, at least once a week, you know, just regular writing. And the more you do that, the more, uh, you, you know, the better you'll get. And the more you'll understand yourself and what your preoccupations are, which we talked about earlier in the panel. And then, you, you know, like everything will just fall into place. Everything works out for you. I think it, it might take a long time. You never know how long it's going to take. But as long as you're doing that work and you're, you're building your craft, you can't really go wrong, I think. So just write. I think it's just really interesting to talk to other writers and be on the panel with other writers and have the, a discussion. We kind of had a discussion between each other as much as we were discussing with the audience. Um, just that feeling that you're not alone, I think, is the main thing. And even for, you know, you're a published writer, uh, you know, you do a few things like this. I mean, I haven't done it for a while, but, um, you know, I've been to many conferences and stuff. There's always a sense of like there's a bigger family unit or there's a bigger, it's like going to your union party or something like that. You know what I mean? You just meet like-minded individuals and you understand that, okay, it's, it's, yeah, I, I agree with that. I understand that. Yeah, this is what we do. That's really exciting. So, great. Mm -hmm.